A lot of people have started doing what is called urban car camping. This is where you find a way to travel a lot more for a lot less by using your own car as a free custom mobile hotel room. Now, first of all, let me explain that this does not require you to go out and buy a whole new type of vehicle in order to urban car camp. It is true that one of the most popular ways to do it is to have a van or a truck that you can convert into a fairly large living or sleeping space. But you can also convert SUVs, pickup trucks, minivans, and even compact cars. And I know firsthand because I've been living in my Prius for over two and a half years. And during that time, it's given me the freedom financially and time-wise to take multiple cross-country trips and to pursue my dream career of becoming a tech entrepreneur by moving to Silicon Valley and creating some artificial intelligence tech startups. So let's talk about how people are converting their cars into campers. The first thing is a sleeping area. That's the most basic thing and really all you have to do to have the ability to urban car camp. And that's just finding a place in your car where you can usually bend down one of the back seats and create a large enough area to sleep in. I can promise you that there's probably a video for your brand of car on YouTube somewhere where somebody shows how they've created a sleeping area inside that type of car in order to be able to car camp. So once you figure out where in your car you're going to sleep, then the next thing is to figure out what you're going to sleep on. Now this can be simple, like just taking a comforter off of your bed and laying it down in your car, which is actually the first thing I did when I moved into my car or purchasing sleeping bags, which was the second thing that I did after moving into my car, or there's all kinds of mattresses and pads. We'll talk a little bit more about those later in this video. The next thing is to focus on privacy and security. And the easiest way to do that in my experience has been to create a system that hides you when you're sleeping in your car. So for example, I've created blackout panels that completely hide me at night. I can be sitting in my car at 11 p.m. where it's dark outside, with the lights on in my car, watching a movie, and if somebody walked by my car, because I've got tint in these blackout panels, the windows would look, just look black and it would look like the car is empty and it's just dark. And you can find out more about blackout panels and other systems for privacy and security in some of my other videos. In fact, I'll put a playlist in the description section below so you can browse those videos and learn a lot more about creating privacy and security. The other thing that's really popular that people get to save even more money in addition to using their car as a free mobile hotel room is to create a way to take your own food. I mean, think about it. If you could take your own food and have a place to sleep every night, then basically taking trips to anywhere just comes down to the cost of gas. And imagine how many trips you could start taking if all you really had to pay for is the cost of gas. Again, I've taken multiple cross-country trips where that really was the only expense except for occasionally going to the grocery store to restock my cooler and again you can see in some of my other videos different options for coolers there's a video I did about refrigerator coolers for instance that you can get that actually run like a refrigerator and keep things cold and some of those refrigerator coolers even have freezer sections if you really want to go all out and feel like you're living in luxury in your car then you can also find ways to cook there are a lot of great ways to integrate different types of hot plates stoves, microwaves, and other things into your car. And we'll actually look at that a little more in depth here in a few slides. Now, if you decide that you're wanting to have appliances in your car, then the other thing that you'll want to understand are inverters. And these are basically pieces of equipment that plug into your car. And then while your car is running, they create outlets just like you have on your walls in your house that you can plug things into. Again, I've got some videos that I've done on this subject, and to keep this video as a basic introduction, I won't go into inverters, but it is something you want to learn a little bit more about and see if it's a good fit for how you want to car camp. And the other thing that's an option in terms of power is if you decide that you want to have a refrigerator, for instance, in your car, then there's power stations that you can have. They're like batteries that charge while you're driving, and then you can keep things plugged into them because when your car's turned off, they'll continue to run your refrigerator or appliance until the next time you start driving and can charge it up again. They're really cool things to have if you're going to car camp or live in your car. And finally, last but not least, is an emergency toilet. Now, sometimes you might go to campsites that have restrooms, so a toilet's not a problem, but sometimes you may be in a situation where there's not an immediate place nearby that's open that has a restroom to go to, so you always want to have an emergency toilet on hand. And I'll link in the description section below the one that I bought that's real inexpensive, 
really well designed and takes up very little space when you're using it. So I know it's kind of a gross and touchy subject. But that's another thing you want to think about when you start learning how to car camp. So now let's talk about creating the comfortable sleeping area. So you've, you've chosen an area of your car that you're going to use for sleeping. And now you're wondering, how do I make this area really comfortable? So first of all, you want to figure out how to make that area as flat as possible, just because we're used to sleeping on flat surfaces like mattresses. And so that'll be step number one. And there's a lot of cool ideas for doing that in my playlist and in other videos that you can look up on YouTube. The next is adding padding. So you want to try to make it as soft as possible. Unless you're used to sleeping on a hard surface, you probably become accustomed to sleeping on very soft surfaces. And so what you'll want to do is look at the different options for sleeping bags, inflatable mattresses, foam pads. And to give you some ideas, in the description section below, I'll link to some products that I've found and tried myself that are inexpensive, really great options for padding your sleeping area. And back to blocking out the windows and hiding yourself and having privacy and security, it's just much more comfortable sleeping at night knowing that people aren't walking by your car looking in and seeing you there asleep, looking at you and maybe thinking about breaking in. It's just a whole nother level of relaxation and comfort when you're trying to fall asleep knowing you are completely hidden and have privacy. So again, I encourage you to watch the videos that I've created and other people have created about creating blackout panels for your windows. And then it's just about thinking ahead and figuring out what you'll need. If you're going to be in a place that may get cold at night, then you'll want to get a heavier sleeping bag, for example, that's rated for colder weather. If you're going to be sleeping in a place that's hot, then you'll want to make sure you have things like a fan that you can set up in your car to run at night to help keep yourself cool. And to help give you some more ideas in the description section below, I'll actually put some links to different things that myself and other car campers have used that are really helpful and convenient. And then the other thing is to maximize your space. So if you're going to travel longer than a couple days, then you're probably going to bring a decent amount of stuff with you. So it becomes important to figure out how to efficiently store those items. And we'll actually look at that a little more in depth here in a couple slides. And then just consider comfort items that can help you fall asleep. In some recent videos that I did, I talked about sleeping at truck stops and people responded saying, well, they're, they're bright and noisy. And I agree, but you can overcome that, number one, by having blackout panels or you can just get something like an eye mask so that to your eyes, it's completely dark. And also, as long as your car is locked up and secure and has an alarm system, I even get earplugs so that you can have more silence and not be woken up by people around you if you're sleeping in a busy area for safety purposes. So now let's talk a little bit more about appliances for car camping because this is some really cool stuff that you can get for not a lot of money that can really make it more of a luxurious experience staying in your car as a mobile hotel room. So first they're camping stoves. So if you're going to go to campsites or have a place where you can kind of open up your car and maybe set a little table outside of your car, then camping stoves are great. Now I'd really hesitate to use a camping stove inside of a vehicle one because of the fumes and that come off of the flames and two just because of running the risk of possibly starting a fire but there are some really cool camp stoves that are available out there for not a lot of money and i'll put some links in the description section below to some of my favorites the other thing is just a basic hot plate there's some really great hot plates on the market and they're designed for like truckers that need ways to cook food in their vehicle and so i'll put a link to a hot plate that i have and i use it's inexpensive but for this and the rest of the items on this list you're going to need some type of way to plug it in like an inverter or a power station so keep that in mind if it has a plug that plugs into an outlet in a house you're going to need an inverter or a power station and then there's the Instant Pot. Instant Pots are great. You can cook food. It keeps it all covered up tight while it's cooking. And there's all kinds of great recipes you can have to throw together and easily cook in an Instant Pot. And so that's something to consider. And then the microwave. Man, when I first got my microwave and started using it in my car, it's such a great luxury because I don't know about you, but I can cook almost anything in a microwave and it cooks fast. So I've really enjoyed having a microwave with me all the time. And they make some real small ones that don't take up much space at all. And finally, Coolers, especially refrigerated coolers, is like having a refrigerator in your car. You can get them really big and carry a lot of stuff. Some of them even have freezer compartments, or you can get smaller, more affordable ones. I have actually had multiple refrigerator coolers, and I'll put some links in the description section below so that you can actually see what those are like and look at some options and their pricing on Amazon. So now let's talk about maximizing your space and some storage solution ideas. So again, if you're going to take an extended trip, I'd say more than a couple days, 
you're going to be taking a decent amount of stuff with you. And so in addition to storing your food, you may want some baskets or storage bins. You'll also want to think about storage when you buy the items for your bedding. So for example, like I said, I started out with a com an old comforter as, as my sleeping pad, but it just really didn't store well. So then I went to sleeping bags, which are designed to be rolled up tight and just shoved to the side. That's worked great. I also then decided I wanted a little more padding, so I bought a foam pad and it's designed to roll up as well so with my sleeping bag and my foam pad so they roll up and are easily pushed to the side and stored if I want to hang out in my car and work or be in my car during the day and then if you want to get more elaborate there you can build shelves and you can build cabinets and you can do all kinds of things if you have a bigger vehicle like a van for example I've never done that because I've always lived in my Prius but there's a lot of great videos on YouTube that you can search for if that's something that you're interested in and then finally, kind of a nice little storage hack idea is hanging storage. There's a lot of really cool and innovative hanging storage ideas that you can hang from the back of seats or hang on the side inside of your car that really help you organize items and maximize your space when it comes to storage. And I've got some really cool ideas that I'll put links to in the description section below. So once you've got your car figured out of where you're going to sleep, how you're going to sleep, what kind of things you're going to want to keep in your car or take with you in your car. The next thing is where do you go to park and sleep at night? And recently I did a series of videos about different ideas and I'll, and I'll cover them in this next set of slides as just a really basic introduction. But if you want to learn more specifics about each of these ideas, then go to the description section and go to my how to playlist and you can browse the recent videos and see videos on each of these ideas in more depth. So the first is truck stops. If you're going on a trip that'll take you on the road, on the highways and interstates, then truck stops are usually pretty frequent along the road and they're an easy way to sleep at with a few cautions and things that you should know about. So watch my truck stop sleeping video if that's of interest. Then there's parking lots and mostly people who urban car camp use parking lots at 24 hour businesses like Walmart parking lots are real popular to park in and sleep at night. I've stayed in an IHOP parking lot before. Basically anything that's open 24 hours so you're not just alone in an abandoned parking lot at night are really great options. There's also just side streets in residential neighborhoods. A lot of times if I'm going to park on a side street I'll go somewhere where there's more traffic and more cars so I don't look out of place, like I'll park near an apartment complex. But really, any kind of side street that doesn't have any signs that say no overnight parking is an option to park at. I just usually try to find a side street that has houses on one side and maybe a park or something on the other, so you're not just parked in front of somebody's house. Then there's also 24-hour gyms. I have always had a membership to a 24-hour gym because I like to stay healthy, and also they're a great place to be able to shower when you're on the road. So anytime fitness or planet fitness usually have one or more locations in every major city. And so that's a good way that you can have the option to work out if you want to, but also more importantly to go shower in the mornings, get yourself cleaned up and ready for the day, and then also have access to a bathroom 24 hours a day so you don't have to use that emergency toilet. And then I know it's unconventional, but this is one of my favorites, graveyards and cemeteries. The reason I like them is because almost every graveyard and cemetery has a road all the way around the perimeter that a lot of times have a residential neighborhood on the other side of the street. And because they're the kind of place people go park and walk into, there's usually no signs on the street with restrictions for overnight parking. So I find them to be quiet and convenient places to park and sleep at night. And again, I did a recent video on places to sleep, and I specifically did one on graveyards and cemeteries that you can find in the how-to playlist. So now that we've talked about how to think about staying in your car and where to sleep, let's talk about a few safety and privacy considerations. First of all, obviously lock your doors and windows, but you just want to double check and make sure that you do that before you settle in for the night. And one thing that a lot of people don't think about is if you have a key fob, you want to make sure that that key fob can't send its signal to the car because a lot of cars are designed that as long as you have that key fob on you, you can just reach out, pull the door handle, and it'll unlock. That means if somebody walks up to your car at night, reaches out, 
tries to p open the door, your key fob will send a signal that it's nearby and the car will say, okay, well, this must be the person with the key fob trying to get in the car. And that other person may be able to just open your door. So what I do is I buy a Faraday bag, which is a specially designed bag. So when you put something in it that sends out a signal, like a key fob, that signal can't get outside of the bag. So the car doesn't sense the key fob and won't unlock when somebody pulls on the door handle. I'll leave a link to a really inexpensive, great Faraday bag that I've been using in the description section below. Again, you'll also want to look at some type of window covers. If you don't want to take the time and effort to build your own blackout panels or to purchase panels, then you can just have some type of simple system, like I've seen people hang up sheets and little shades and things, just, again, to block people from being able to see in the car and see what's in there and to give yourself privacy when you're fast asleep at night. And then when you do think about parking, thinking about some of the examples that I just gave you, really put some thought into it and some research into it so that you feel confident that, okay, I know the places that you, I should go sleep and the places that I should avoid, like isolated spots. Because as you get more knowledge and understanding of car camping, you'll become more comfortable with the idea of doing it and you'll get better at it. And then also just make sure you got a security system. If you're going to car camp or live in your car, I would recommend that if your car does not have an alarm system, you get one because it's a small investment for a big peace of mind and a simple tool that is likely to scare away anybody that, that could possibly try to break into your car at night. And then just be safe out there. Uh, make sure that you have emergency supplies like a first aid kit and a fire extinguisher if you're going to be cooking food in your car. I definitely have a small fire extinguisher on hand. And then just get some type of self-defense, something simple like pepper spray. And have a good size can of pepper spray in your car so that if somebody does break in, you have some type of self-defense item. I've got several different types of pepper spray that I bought and used, and I'll leave some of those linked in the description section. So this video has gone longer than I thought it would, so I'm going to wrap things up here. But I hope this has been helpful information. And if you want more ideas to how you could create a free hotel room that allows you to travel more for a lot less, or even if you're considering living in your car, possibly using it as a way to retire earlier and find more freedom, then that's what this channel is all about. This channel is about bringing you knowledge, ideas, and insights when it comes to car camping and living in a car based upon my two and a half years of living in my Prius and posting a lot of videos on this channel to help share my own insights. So I hope this video has been helpful. Please don't forget to click the subscription section below. We'd love to have you as a member of this community. And I hope that you can use these tools and techniques to find more freedom, more happiness, and maybe even chase your dreams like I've been able to. Good luck with everything and safe travels.